Hello and welcome to level eight. In this level of the project, we're going to add documentation to our API. And it's not only going to be documentation in line in the code, it's also going to be a UI that consumers of your, of your API, they will be able to open up this documentation and test out your API, actually make requests and they can see everything about how your API works from this UI. Okay, so that is very powerful and some good stuff and very nice to have in your project. And we're going to use something called Swagger. So let's go ahead and install everything that we need. And down here in the terminal, I'll do an npm i, and then I will do dash dash save. And then I want to add something called Swagger UI Express. And also we would like to have the types for this. So we can do add types slash Swagger UI Express. And one more thing that we're going to need is that we need Swagger JS doc. It's called, yes, swagger dash JS doc, like this. And we also need the types for this. So I will install those as well in exactly the same way, add types slash swagger JS doc. So that was installing all of the dependencies that we need. And next we're going to need a swagger.ts file. To create this file, I'll just do touch. And then in the source directory, I will create a swagger.ts and open up this file and just paste in everything that we're going to need here. So there's a lot going on here, but mostly it is just a swagger comment. And these swagger comments can be quite long. So it's a good point in time now for you to get used to collapsing your stuff in the editor. But this swagger, is, uh, swagger comment is going to uh, add a lot of documentation to our, um, to our API. And this is what we're going to use. And we are going to need to add a comment like this for all of our endpoints. But let's just go through it. So this swagger in the swagger.ts file, this, um, this comment specifies some different components. And this syntax is called YAML syntax. And uh, it is very important with these indentations. They are very important for how this works. Um, and it's a different kind of structuring data compared to JSON where you have the, the key and the value. This is a bit similar, but, but with a, a different syntax. So what we are specifying here is that we have a book schema. So we are again defining our, our schema for these books. And what we're saying is that for a book, it will be a, an object. It will have these required fields in it. And um, then we are also specifying more details to each of these fields. So we're saying that the title will be a string and we have a small description. And then we have the author, which is a string. We have a description of that field as well. And same with the published. Then we also give an example of what a book could look like with a title, author, and published. And next, we also have a schema for the book update. Again, we specify it's an object and we have these three properties on it or fields on it, and they are optional. And then we have the description of these uh, properties. And down here, we have an example. So in this file, I have, in this comment, I have defined my schemas that will be visible in the UI documentation that you will see very, very soon. So that is one thing we need. Then down here, we create something called a swagger.js doc, or we can also call it a swagger spec. And in here, we provide an, uh, an object, and this object takes a couple of different things. First of all, it takes this definition object, where you're specifying what version of OpenAI, not OpenAI, sorry, Open API that you're using. I'm currently using 3.00. Um, and then you have some info about your API. For example, the title of it, the version, number, and a description. This will all be shown in the UI that you'll see later. Next, we have a list. So outside of the definition, we have a list of APIs. And this is where Swagger is going to be looking for uh, swagger documentation to put in the UI. So I'm telling it that I wanted to grab my current directory name. So the, the directory that I'm currently in and then go into uh, routers and then find all files that end with a .js. So wildcard.js. And I want to do the same thing for the TS file. And I also want to grab this swagger.ts file and the corresponding swagger.js file. And the reason that I put both the JS and the TS is that 
If I want to debug this project and run it in debug mode, then I would like to run my TypeScript code instead of my JavaScript code. Because remember that the JavaScript is always the built version where everything is scrambled together and not very readable. And that is not where we want to debug and put in breakpoints. If I want to debug my program using breakpoints, then I have to do it in the TypeScript version of my files. And that is why I want the Swagger UI to be looking both into the TypeScript files and into the JavaScript files. The JavaScript is for when I build the project and I'm looking at, at that. And TypeScript files are for when I'm debugging in case I want to do some debugging. So that's why I have both of them. All right. So that is actually the swagger.ts file. All we need to do now is to import it and to use it in our app. So if we open up our app.ts file and down here we can add one more use statement. So we do app.use and then we specify the path and this path will be slash API dash docs. This can be whatever you want, but this is the endpoint that you have to go to in order to view the UI. And then we have to add some more stuff. We do swagger UI dot serve and not dot server dot serve. And this one we have to import. Let's see if we can do an import. Nope. I'll just grab it from over here then. Just one second. So write an import statement like this. We get swagger UI, which is what we just installed previously with NPM. And finally, we do swagger UI again, dot setup. And then we have to grab the swagger spec. And remember, this swagger spec is the is the object that we have defined in the swagger.ts. So once we have all that, now if we run our server, which is already running like this, if we go to our browser and we go to the URL or go to the endpoint that is slash API dash docs and we hit enter, then we see this swagger UI. And now you can begin to see some of the things that we just set up in the configuration. First of all, we have the schemas. We have the book schema that specifies that you need the title, author and the published. And here we have the more, some more documentation of it. These are the descriptions and, and the information that you just saw in the swagger.ts file. We have the same thing for the book update. And currently we have no endpoints. And that's because we have not added those comments to our endpoints yet. But I'll do that just now. So currently we have everything that is defined inside of this file. And that is because we have specified that Swagger should go and look for Swagger, specific, uh, Swagger documentation in these files. And we're also looking in the routers files, but we haven't added it yet. But if we open up the, the book router, then we can start adding documentation here. And again, this is going to be a big, long, long comment. So I'm just going to copy it from over here. So this is the comment for the first endpoint, which is slash books. And what we specify here is that it's going to be a get request. And there's a small summary that tells us what this does. It returns all books. And then we have a tag. Don't worry about that for now. You can look into it later. And we specify what kind of responses you can get. Of course, you could also get a response 500 or 400. For now, I'm, I just have a 200 in my uh, documentation. Again, this is to keep it more simple and lightweight. If you want to expand this to have the full extent of your of everything that can happen, then you should do that. But for now, this is just to give you a, an example of how to do this. So we can get a 200 response and this will be, this is the description of the response and the content will be uh, JSON. And down here you can see that the schema will be specifying or referring with this ref to the components slash schemas slash book. And where does this come from? This comes from the Swagger TS. So over here, where we have defined our schemas and our book under the components, this is what we're referring to when we are referring to this book schema. So now if we jump back over to the UI and refresh the page, you see that we now have one endpoint that Swagger has detected this comment. And it's because this comment starts with this at Swagger. And this means that we now can see that we have this endpoint. We can get some information on it by, by clicking on it, by expanding. And here you can see uh, if it takes any parameters, which it does not, we can see the different kind of responses that it gets and we can also try it out. So if we click try it out, we get to execute it and it will start, uh, it will contact our server and it will actually get us a response. And as you can see, this is the response we got where we get our list of the two books that we currently have in the database. So 
that will be the documentation for the for the get endpoint to get all books and of course I'll now just add documentation to the rest of the endpoints and I'll just be copying them from over here and I have now copied all the um, all the documentation and of course this makes this file very very long but that is all right because you can always just go ahead and fold all of these and then you won't see uh, everything at once but let's try to look at the uh, at the insert for example if we if we fold this one out and we take a look at it we can see that it is a post request to slash books and it's about creating a new book and it requires this body which will be of this type the book type and you can also see the responses that are possible to get here we can also get a 500 or a 400 for the in invalid input or a server error that has occurred so now that i have this documentation for all of the different endpoints and of course you can find this file in the uh, github re repo that is public and available for this project so you don't have to uh, look at all this and write it, type it in yourself you can just copy it and modify it however you need but now that i have everything if i jump back over to our our UI here and refresh the page then you can see that we have different all the different endpoints we have our get for the books post for the books to create a new book we can try it out in here we can add the JSON that we want and so on so this is of course an alternative to postman that we have been using all along but of course your clients might not be using or your users might not be using uh, postman and also postman does not give all the information about how this endpoint works but because you are specifying it in the documentation, you are both uh, making sure that you remember it yourself, but you're also providing this information to the clients of this backend. So this could, for example, be the people that are, or the developers developing the front end. And it's very nice for them to have something like this to look into so that they can get uh, knowledge about exactly how your API works. So now you have successfully added uh, documentation and Swagger documentation, which gives you this very nice UI. Of course, you will have to keep this documentation up to date. And one thing that would be very, very nice would be if, I, if it was possible to take the sub schemas, this schema, and automatically turn that into um, the schema that we have over here in the Swagger TS, because this is actually a step where you're duplicating the same information twice, which is of course uh, a shame and unfortunate that you have to do the same work twice, which we would always want to avoid. But I have not yet found a good way for me to automatically transfer my SOT schemas and my Prisma schemas into uh, Swagger documentation. But it would be very nice if there was a tool that would handle all this automatically and automatically keep this um, up to date, this, this whole comment so that you don't have to do it manually. But for now, I don't know a way, but if you find one, please be sure to, to tell me about it because it would be very, very powerful to not have to type this out yourself. But nonetheless, it is very good to have this documentation and it's very good to keep it up to date and it's very valuable for the consumers of your API. All right, that was uh, level eight of the project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and uh, happy coding.